Another day, another vulnerability in a widely used piece of software. Today we're talking about the zero day vulnerability that is affecting Firefox, and as a result, also the Tor browser, the browser that people use to go onto the Onion network uh, and do things that are definitely legitimate and not drug dealing. In this video, I'm talking about the, the vulnerability itself. There aren't a ton of details right now out about it, but we do know that it is a use after free vulnerability, and I wanna go into what that means. I think that, set of words confuses a lot of people. And I wanna kinda of go into a higher level overview of what that looks like at a code level. Now, if you're new here, hi, my name is Ed. This is Low Level TV, a channel where I talk about cybersecurity, software security, or just whatever I wanna talk about. So if you like that stuff or just wanna hang out with me, hit that sub button, I'd really appreciate it. So as you see here, uh, Firefox zero day under attack, update your browser immediately. So there has been a research company uh, called ESET that figured out that there was a vulnerability in the way that Microsoft handled handles animation timelines. So kind of comically, um, you actually are able to exploit this vulnerability by using malicious CSS, by creating a set of CSS animations that take advantage of this use after free. They're, they have seen hackers getting remote code execution, meaning that they control the code running on the remote PC with this malicious CSS. Now again, it doesn't mean that CSS itself is a vulnerability or that CSS is malicious. It is the way that Mozilla Fire Firefox is interpreting the animation timelines in the CSS that creates a use after free vulnerability, which allows an attacker to get code execution. Now, I want people to understand that, you know, how, how do you exploit a browser? How do browsers get hacked? Well, when I go to this website, like right now I'm on Hacker News, right? If I hit refresh, there is this entire process that goes on where the browser has to reach out to the server, it has to send it a get request, it has to parse the headers of the request, and then it has to ingest all the HTML, it has to ingest all of the JavaScript, it has to parse and render all of the images and the JavaScript files that are presented in the, the response that the website gives us. All of that is code, all of that is happening in a series of C and C++ code that has been around since the inception of Mozilla, so I think like since the early 90s, that just like any other code base, could have vulnerabilities, right? I mean, I know that like the C that I write, I've been writing C for over 10 years and I still very often write vulnerabilities in C. If you take a piece of software that is as complex as what is required to render JavaScript, you are inevitably going to have vulnerabilities. So as again, ESET figured out, there is a vulnerability that is being actively exploited in Firefox and you can actually get away from this vulnerability. You can update right now to Firefox 13102 and you will not be vulnerable to this attack. So that's pretty cool. But again, real world attacks, they're using what is called a use after free vulnerability. So what, what is use after free? Hey guys, real quick, before we continue, today's video is sponsored by me. Uh, this is my site, Low Level Academy. I personally believe that in a world where JavaScript and TypeScript and a lot of high level languages are very popular, it's really important to understand how computers work at a fundamental level. And all of my courses are designed to do that. In my course, Zero to Hero C Programmer, I'll teach you how to code in C and how every operating system works at a very fundamental level. We'll build on that and learn how network code works, how threading code works. And if you want, I can even teach you a Assembly. Now in these courses, I have some free sections. Go check them out. The whole course package is on sale right now using Spooky 20 until Halloween. You get 20% off lifetime access. You can't write good code if you don't get the fundamentals. And where do you learn the fundamentals? On Low Level Academy. Thanks for watching the ad. I appreciate it. Back to the video. Use after free. But what does that actually mean? Like how, how can a hacker take advantage of this to make bad things happen? Well, here on the left, I have a very simple piece of C code. And if you're not new, if you don't know how C works, I'll, I'll explain it all really quickly. The way that user after freeze typically cause a condition to be exploitable is this thing called type confusion. So for example, here, I've defined two very, very primitive types. I have the struct cat, which is an animal that has an ID and a function pointer that we're going to use to make the cat speak. This is kind of how V tables are actually implemented in C++. And we have the structured dog, which is the same as cat, only ID and function pointer are flipped in their location. And if you've done any kind of capture the flag uh, CTF, you can probably immediately see where I'm going with this. We have two global pointers that are called Randy and Frank, my dog Randy, my cat Frank, or flip that, you know what I mean? And then we have two functions that are used to make the cat and the dog speak, right? So again, if this were C++, 
This would be a virtual interface, and these function pointers would be the vtable entry to the respective speak function, right? So cat speak and dog speaks. We have a little bit of a vtable thing going on, and this is likely how the vulnerability works in Firefox, because Firefox is a C++ code base. So we have a set of functions that do various things with these function pointers, and we're going to use these to demonstrate how a use after free works. So if I were to say new dog to my program, it'll set Frank equal to some buffer, it'll, it'll malloc Frank, it'll set Frank's function pointer to the speak function and set its ID to this long for one string. And again, if you've ever played CTF, you probably immediately know where I'm going with this. And then the same thing, if I say new cat, we'll make a cat and we'll say cat speak and we'll say 424242. And then also we have functionality, if we want to delete the dog, delete the cat, we will free Frank and free Randy. Now notice we are not removing the pointer Frank, we are not removing the pointer Randy, we are simply freeing it. By not erasing the pointer, this line here is a use after free, right? We are able to free Frank and then later reference the function pointer to that location, right? So that is not a good thing. Now what we're able to do with this is we're able to create a case where we have a pointer to Frank but it actually points to the memory of Randy. We are able to confuse the type of Frank to make the compiler think, or to make the runtime think that it is a cat while it is also a dog, which makes the ID value overlap with the function pointer of the other type. And if a hacker can control the ID value, they control the function pointer, which is where the code is going to execute, thus giving them remote code execution. Let's go into this in, uh, in GDB real quick, and I'll kind of walk you through how this works. So we're gonna go into GDB, we'll run the UAF program. I have to do a few things. First, I have to type in new dog, which creates a dog by setting Frank equal to some malloc buffer and his function pointer and ID equal to these two values. Now, to make this use after for usable, I have to now delete the dog, right? Delete dog. I now have a dangling pointer to a Frank object that I have not cleared. So now when I type new cat, I actually have a type confusion where the same pointer bo points to both Frank and Randy, right? Frank and Randy are now the same object in memory, but they're two separate pointers, a type confusion. So now when I go to type speak, it'll try to use the ID of Randy, which is 4242-4242, to be the function pointer that Frank calls. So let's do speak, and you'll see we crash here where we're trying to run the code at this location. 4242, 4242. We are using an invalid pointer. Now, if I made a function where I could control the ID of Randy, I would be able to use that to control the function pointer and effectively get control of this program. This is a use after free. Now, this is a segment in the video that typically gets a very political response, but I think it's important to talk about it in the context of memory corruption vulnerabilities. Um, would Rust have fixed this? The answer is yes, and actually the borrow checker in Rust is specifically designed to prevent use after free vulnerabilities. So yes, Rust would have fixed this bug specifically because it's like exactly what it is designed to prevent. Now the ironic part, the funny part, the kind of part that made me giggle, is that uh, Firefox is owned by the Mozilla Foundation, and Mozilla is also the company that started Rust so if you look at it, it's just kind of funny that the browser like by Rust is under attack using a vulnerability that Rust is meant to prevent. It kind of shows you like the 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 technical debt or the 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 inertia side of code where like all because Rust exists doesn't mean that like Rust is going to just take over the world and C and C++ are going to go away, right? Like these are legacy code bases that are on the order of decades old. If we are going to get to a place where we have memory safe code, we have to either acknowledge that it's going to take a very long time or start from the ground up. And how, well, which one we take is a very bureaucratic and uh, political decision, but nonetheless, I think it's an interesting case study on how Rust can make the, the world a safer place. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you like this video, do me a favor, hit subscribe, like the video, and then check out this video, nope, this video, about a topic I think you will enjoy just as much. We'll see you over there. Take care.